Hi, Rebecca. How are you doing? You're muted. I'm well. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. Good. I've been watching um, an impressionist uh, documentary hmm? online with um, a man um, who's done about three or four films. And now today we, we're learning about Degas and right. what an interesting and rebel type personality he had. It's very fascinating. Well, yes, the Impressionists were quite revolutionary for their time. Yes, and, and I didn't realize that in uh, this um, series of documentaries is pointing all of that out. Yeah, well, that was kind of the importance of really the, the whole Impressionist movement. It was that they, they went so totally against the grain of the academic establishment and the salon. Um, and they really, you know, they really opened up the accessibility to other artists, you know, to participate really in a conversation that had been, you know, pretty much so closed off for, you know, most of history up to that point. So, so yes, I mean, think of it this way. If you lived in 1820 or 1800 and you decided that uh, you wanted to be a painter uh, or an artist of, or even, you know, any kind of artisan or craftsman, you couldn't just decide to do that. You had to be sanctioned by the salon, you know, to have your work viewed by the public. And if you were not, you know, if you say, like, for example, we just saw a series of films about Elizabeth uh, VJ LeBron. And remember the part where she was not a member of the guild? And, yes. and the guild basically came and shut her down, took her studio away from her. See, to stop her from, you know, basically doing something that they felt was, you know, sort of their territory. And so, you know, that's kind of the way it was, <laughs> you know. And so well, then we do have we do have a great a great debt of gratitude to be paid to the impressionists for breaking open or breaking breaking away from that um, very enclosed system that that was not yeah. allowing everybody to do what they wanted to do and so i guess um yeah that, um, Ms. lebron had a very um, important influence on that too well other than the fact that she sort of defended the establishment and that order um yeah I, I mean, she she did break the mold, you know, um, you know, as many women were, but most of the women tried to play within the rules and tried to basically be a member of a guild or something like that, and and she did not for a good period of time, and that's kind of what got her in trouble, you know, uh, and the only thing that saved her <laughs> was the fact that. <laughs> You know, she had made some very good social connections, which were able to step in and intervene in her behalf. Otherwise, one of them was one of them was a king, right? Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> king of France. yeah, yeah. You know, they're not going to argue with him too much. You know, no. Yeah, because he he is the establishment. Okay, you know, you can't get more establishment than that. Um. And so, you know, so she was certainly fortunate, you know, that he did intervene. And, and the fact is, if he had not, 
we wouldn't be talking about her now. Right. Because she would be buried in history as so yeah. many other artists are. Hey, Armando. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, everybody. Hi there. Yeah. Armando, how are you doing? Yes. Oh, I'm doing fine. It's a beautiful day outside. Um, it is. I put too much stuff on it, and I was sweating. Okay. Well, as as long as you show up, you know, kind of, you know, semi dressed, you know, and, no. uh, I think <laughs> I think we'll be okay. So hi, Veronica. You change your hair. Oh, Armando. Good afternoon. Where's your hair? What are you doing with your hair? My hair is under my scarf. I was doing construction in the house, so. Oh. I didn't want it to get dusty. What kind of construction? What yeah, what kind of construction are you doing, Veronica? Well, um, I was sanding the walls because, you know, it had that ugly brown paneling. So I filled it in and then sanded it and then... Um, and once you sand with the machine, the, the dust flies everywhere. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You have to do it by hand, not with the machine inside the house. Yes. Well, I have I, experience, too. Yeah, I don't want to do it by hand. It takes too long. I'll be here, to, you know, for a long time. No. Yeah, but now you're going to have dust all over everything. Well, I got most of the yeah. dust up, you know, because, you know, the more I have to do this, the less time I have to paint. That's right. You did the right thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's a big project. <laughs> yes, and depending on the on the sander that you have, whether you're using a palm sander, or belt sander, uh, a lot of those have a connection that you can attach to a shop vac so that the dust doesn't go everywhere. Oh, okay. I, I have to look into that because it has a little thingy here but it yeah, didn't work out well thing. yeah that a bag attaches to yeah well, you, you can yeah. Attach, you can attach a shop vac hose directly to that oh okay all right and that will draw all the dust or the okay. biggest percentage of it, you know yeah. in, into the shop vac okay myself i did that one occasion and then i got dust all over the house yeah. <laughs> no more yeah 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 doing you know doing renovation work or you know things like that in the house yeah you know you're probably going to kick up a little dust you know make a little bit of yeah. dust. it's all part of the process you know yeah. it's all good yeah just just make sure to wear a mask and yeah i had a mask on yeah yeah because you don't want to be breathing and stuff either so, no mm -mm. either that or have it open and ventilated so that Fresh air can well, it's still, it's still, even though Armando said he was sweating, it's still a little cold for me to open up the windows. <laughs> okay. Maybe a fan or something, maybe that would have helped. Uh, that would be me. Yeah. That would okay. be me. Because I'm a little hot. Oh, oh. okay. Where are you bathing suit? Yeah, you're going to yeah, you're feel cold. Yeah. Mm. I don't think anybody's wearing a bathing suit today. Okay. But I have, no, seen I, yeah. I have seen people in shorts and t-shirts walking oh. on the street. Okay. Well, not me, no. Yeah, yeah I, I, I actually saw a couple of people out walking yesterday in pair of shorts and stuff. Okay. It was warm enough. It was in the 60s. So. Anyhow, <clears throat> we're going to jump right in and get started. And okay. But I do have a question. Okay, uh, I sent you guys an email early this morning. Yeah. Uh -huh. How many people will actually watch that video uh, from Thoughty too? I haven't watched it yet. I watched no. both. I watched. You did you? I, I, I wasn't here for the one discussion, one. but I watched the video. It was very, it was very enlightening. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, yeah, because one of I only watched one. Yeah, and the and I I want to be very clear as to why I sent that. <laughs> Okay, because we have to, okay, if we're going to continue on as a group and a class and things like that, um, find a way to, A, you know, be respectful of each other's views, 
And mm -hmm. number two, um, you know, we, we need to be very careful about going too far. Yes. You know, in censoring people. Okay. Especially yes, today. Yeah. And so we have to strike a balance here. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's really important. Um, you know, because look, you know, I mean, we're all adults, you know. Uh, we all have different life experiences, come from different places, and we all have different viewpoints on things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and that doesn't mean that you have to agree with anybody. Um, you know, I mean, and more than likely you won't. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you get two people in the room. Yeah, not going to happen. So, um, but, you know, going forward, you know, we need to be respectful of each other. So when we're having conversations and things like that, if somebody's saying something, you know, let's not butt in, let's not try to talk over them uh, just because you disagree with them, right? You know, let them finish what they're saying, you know? I will try to give everybody, you know, an equal and fair hearing on whatever is being said. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my only request is that, you know, I know that while we're talking about art and, you know, the fact that art really does reflect life and history, um, you know, we are going to cross into some uncomfortable areas, okay? It's just going to happen, right? And there's really no way of avoiding it. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's an open forum you know, for us to, you know, kind of talk over people, you know, uh, you know, no matter how vehemently we disagree with them, okay? Um, you know, they have a right to their opinion, you know, you have a right to yours, you know, and, you know, I just, the only thing I'm asking is that everybody be respectful of each other, okay? Is that... I think everybody should be hearing this and not just the people who are here. Right. Because some of the people who are not here are the ones that are disrespectful. Yeah. Well, and you know, I tried to express that in that evening as clearly as I could. Mm -hmm. okay. And I believe in forgiveness. Pardon? I believe in forgiveness. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. we can leave from the past. We have to Get along and move on. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, even if you have a disagreement with someone, you know, whoever that is, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's a disagreement, you know, and that doesn't make them any better or worse of a person. It's just, okay, you don't see things the same way. And it's, you yep. know, welcome to the world. <laughs> you know, that is the way it is. Um, at any rate. Okay, so I just kind of wanted to get that out there. Okay. Okay, so uh, we won't talk about any other subjects except for art from now on. Well, that's, yeah. what I, that's not what I said. Not what I said. We are going to probably traipse into areas, you know, about, you know, society and the situations in society at the time. And we're just going to have to be, you know, a little more respectful that you know other people are going to have different opinions you know mm -hmm. and i think it's such a touchy subject that well it is difficult, you know, it is very touchy subject. yeah and if if you if you watch that little thing on uh, you know by thought he too you know i thought he addressed that pretty well yes social media and kind of the atmosphere right now is very inflammatory okay yeah it's, i don't like social media yeah it's really easy for people to react okay yeah so you know you we as about the one who, who i'm sorry did you are you talking about the ones who was making more of a comedic yes uh -huh. uh, yeah. yeah the english guy. i think yeah i think that was a different type of uh situation as far as them the, the freedom of speech with these comedians. Yeah, but I don't think there's anything funny about 
what's going on in the world about freedom of speech. Well, no. Okay, and, and there's not, there's often in our discussions, it's not comedy, okay? No, we're talking not. about history. Um, we're yeah, talking about yeah. things that did happen, okay? That's right. You know, yeah. and again, you know, we're all going to approach that a little bit differently, you know? All I'm saying is, okay, you know, let's realize we have our differences. Okay? Yeah. Um, but, you know, this isn't a venue for us to hash out history. It's, it's a venue for us to kind of talk about what was going on with art and artists and why they did the things they did, um, you know, and how it relates to us today, you know, and how it got us to where we are right now. Mm. You know, yeah. and, and right, right now, now, right I now, I think that a lot of us, or most of us, are, our nerves are on edge and we're very sensitive, our yeah. intelligence are up for a lot of different reasons. And the pandemic has just really took us all over the board. And being uh, able to um, be, have to be uh, quarantined almost the whole society for like two years, mm -hmm. uh, some of us are having a lot of challenges and our nerves are on end. And it's where we wouldn't have, some things we could have just shrugged off uh, or we could have handled. But uh, this pandemic has is testing us. It, it is. just really tests us in every aspect of society and our families. There's mm -hmm. not it's not a day that doesn't go by that some of us haven't heard of someone passing away, dying, or or mm -hmm. if it's not our media family, it's someone that we love different every day. I mm -hmm. today I heard twice, you know. So you know, and, and so you, and 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 a lot of people taking advantage of uh, situations, people being uh, uh, taking advantage of fraud and stuff like that in their life because during the pandemic, the, the evil get eviler. You know, the bad get worse, and 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 people just can't handle certain things anymore. And so I think we all have to be very sensitive. So I have a meeting this evening, and my African American Women's Book Club. And we our book is that we read was reading for this month. It's called Cats. And I know most of you know what that book is. Cats, an origins by discontent. And it talks about slavery and all of that. And so I have to set some ground rules at the beginning because you know a lot of people are gonna come there hurting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we just have to be respectful and say, oh man, to one another. I don't ever say forget, but be respectful. Right. Uh, Absolutely. That was kind of the whole scenario and point of the email, if you read it. Okay. And, you know, I mean, look, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't ever want to try to shut somebody down. You know, if, if, if they have a point to make or something to say, and particularly right now, because we are in a pandemic, and as Claudia pointed out, you know, people are, you know, a little on edge, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's just, it's just the situation we're in right now. So we all, mm -hmm. I mean all, need to be, you know. This meeting is being recorded. The recording has stopped. <laughs> We, we didn't mean to shut you off. Now you, you can't hear you. can't hear you. Unmute yourself. <laughs> we did not shut you off. <laughs> what did you do, Claudia? <laughs> I didn't shut him off. No. <laughs> you have freedom of speech, Charles. Speak. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Unfortunately, the, the, there he is. <laughs> the computer co connection uh, did it for us. Uh, anyway, yeah, you know, my, my point being, the grim ones. yeah, you know, I mean, I, I want everybody to feel comfortable, you know, and have, you know, the ability to say what they want to say, but, you know, just, you know, it doesn't need to get into an argument. And the other point yeah. is, while somebody is talking, we don't need to talk over them. In the book. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Because I'm I'm here as a moderator. I will give you a turn. Okay, I promise. If you want to say something, just let me know. I will be more than happy to let you. You raise your hand like that. Like that. 
Pardon? Yeah. You want to hear? Yes. It wants to be for me. It's you, I think but the pandemic has exposed a lot of things too. You know, we know what we know we do in our book club. Since I I, I put people on, you know, uh, everybody has three minutes. That's it. Mm. And then when you go three minutes is up, you I tell them it's time's mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And then after that, when everybody gets a chance to speak, then we'll come around again for two minutes. But everyone has had a chance to express it, but no talking over. So I think we do better on Zoom than we did when we we're in person at the bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> because many people don't know how to just dive right in. Mm -hmm. um, people, because uh, they just want to be polite and wait because that's just not them. So we have to respect those who sit back, have lots to say, great things, but they're waiting for their turn. And if you don't get in there, you know, you won't have a turn. And, yeah. and some people, like I guess like myself, just move, push you right on in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, so Claudia, try to have respect. Yeah, Claudia, I could, I could institute a rule that we used to have in a men's group that I was a member of. Uh -huh. And when you had something to say, uh -huh. you know, you got the talking stick and you, yeah, had okay. say, you had to say it in 10 words or less. Oh, yes. words? <laughs> wow. Right. That's not the right thing to say to a woman. <laughs> I wasn't going to go down that road. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, all right. So let's, uh, you know, enough of that. Let's let's jump into, you know, what you guys sent in. Because actually, you know, there there's some interesting things that came up, um, you know, that you guys sent in. Uh, and let's hope that the, co you know, computer connection holds. Because <laughs> a little... Excuse me. It's a little iffy today. I don't know why. Maybe something in the weather. At any rate. Or gremlins. Yeah, gremlins. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So. Uh, oh, that's me. All yes. right. Well, no, that is not you. It is your girl. <laughs> yeah. The reason that I only did faces because I'm trying to improve the faces. I have problem doing faces. So that's the only doing I did faces. Okay. Yes, you did. Okay. And Armando, that's perfectly okay. And you only do faces if that's what you want to do. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show the, I'm going to show, well, you've got three of them. I'm going to show the three, and then I'm going to talk about them because it all kind of applies to the, each and every one of them. Okay, so there's one, and this was from last week, right? Yes. And Friday stuff, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so this is the girl who was laying back in the chair, and her head would have been kind of laid over to the side. Um, <coughs> And you, you kind of, Armando, you kind of, uh -huh. you, you didn't really get the, the feeling that the head was laying over, okay? Um, and so, you know, to do that, you need to kind of have, think about what that shape does as it moves. Think of it as a box, right? Rather than, you know, a head. And, you know, if, if it were kind of a rectangular or box type shape, right? And she were looking straight at you, right? You would see that box, you'd see, you know, maybe one, maybe two planes because her head's turned slightly, right? One plane, two plane, right? But in this particular case, you would actually see three because you would see the bottom plane because her head was doing this. And so, well, yeah, kind of like this, it was moving away from it. So you would see this bottom plane, the front plane, right? And a little bit of the side plane. Uh, and that would have, that would have helped a little bit. Um, now I understand what you're trying to do, you know, and it was easier for you in the other two drawings. You know? uh, this drawing, because again, you know, her face was not, at an odd angle or anything, it was just slightly turned. Okay, and you pretty much so captured. Oh, 
what was going on there. As far as, you know, the overall shape of the head, you know, this side feels closer to us than this side. Um, and then in this drawing, you know, it was a little more of a profile, right? And again, you know, her head was up, she was looking forward, okay? So, we did better on two okay? But when we've talked about, you know, drawing heads of the board, the key to drawing a head is really not about drawing the features. It's really about drawing the underlying structure, right? The thing that the features sit on. And I'll be happy to work with you, you know, more and more on this, okay? But you have to begin to understand that what we're really drawing when we're drawing a head is not the eyes, not the nose and the mouth. We're really drawing, you know, the front plane of the face, the eye sockets, right? The forehead, the top of the head, the side planes, right? And the jaw, okay? And once we have those, you know, in orientation, you know, in the way that we're seeing them, that informs us or tells us where to put the eyes, where to put the nose, where to put the mouth, so that it actually sits on that form, okay? Got any questions? No, thank you. Okay. So again, you know, I want you to start looking for more of those three-dimensional shapes, right? And, uh, and like I said, I'll be happy to help you with that. Um, you remember, it was right at the end of the year. You know, I, in fact, here, give me just a second. Let me go get it. Okay. You remember this guy? Oh yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. So let's see. Here's what you're looking at in this draw. See? Her head is slightly turned, right? But the orientation is that it's upright. In this drawing, you know, she's doing more of this, right? So it's not, you know, straight on. It's slightly turned, right? And in this drawing, okay, you've drawn it kind of like this. But in fact, what's happening is it's really kind of more like this. That's what was really kind of going on is that, see, you see a little bit of the bottom plane, and then you see the side plane and the front plane. Okay. And, um, and so that's what I'm talking about, you know, trying to understand three dimensional, right? You know, before you get caught up in, you know, drawing the eyes or the nose or the mouth, you know, it's, it's pretty, you know, you gotta break it down into something really simple like a box, right? Front plane, top, sides, bottom, right? And you get it moving the direction you want, then you can get a little more of the details, you know, built into it, okay? Make sense? Does that help? Yep. And did I send you these? I, th I think I sent an email out with, you know, this shot at different angles. I didn't get it. Yeah, I'd I like, I'd I like to copy mine. that. Yeah, I, I, got I don't too. see it. I only, I only see my, my drawing. I don't see the other thing that you're showing. Uh, the thing oh, no, that I'm holding in front of me. Can you see me? I think a long time ago you sent something like this before. I did. Yeah. yeah I did. Long time ago. Yeah. Okay, Armando, can you see me? Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I shot this at a bunch of different angles and I, I, I sent out an email with it. 
Mm. I'm going to look at my old email, yes. Yeah, if, if not, you know, I'll be happy to send it again. Okay. Because, you know, this is, this is underlying structure, you know, and it's, if you can draw this, right, if you can get the basic shapes, you can draw anybody's face. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's all just those basic underlying shapes. And once you have that established, you know, then it's just figuring out, you know, where the eyes go, how big they are, right? What the shapes are, you know, same thing with the nose, how long or short is it, you know, and the mouth. So, okay. But, yeah, won't be the last time you see this guy. That guy, yeah. Titchener, he, he used that in a lot of his portraits. I'm sorry, what? That the, the Titchener, he used oh, yeah. that in a lot of his portraits when Titchener. he started them. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, one of the reasons I made that was it's just a good visualization, you know, as a tool that I can talk about, you know, and show you, you know, the planes. And remember, we were talking about, and this, I think it came from Proko, about finding the proportions in the head. And we started off, you know, with the circle, right? And then we found the other circle outside of it. And it, it kind of set up, you know, where things sit. You know, usually the, the ear sits on the halfway line from the back to the front of the head, um, you know, in this circle and it just sits on that back, you know, back half. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, abstract concept, <laughs> you know, taking something that's really complicated and simplifying it down into more simplified shapes, simplified shapes. Charles, I, I am familiar with the mask, but not with the lines on it. I certainly would like to get that. Same here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Maybe, like, maybe tomorrow. I'll get okay. some time. I'll put a PDF file together of all those images, and I'll resend it to everybody. Okay, that way you'll have it, and that way you can Thank look you. at it in different orientations. It is helpful. Let me Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, Bernice. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Actually, yeah, that, that's right. That, that's right, right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when it came, it was oriented the other way. But yeah, that's the way the look was. Yeah. And, and I, I, I know which drawing that came from. That's the legs and the feet of the lady who's laying back in the chair. Okay. Right. And, yeah. And, okay. So let's start off with the good news, okay? So, <laughs> uh -oh. uh, yeah. So the good news is, all right, do these look kind of like legs? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you look like you're, you know, kind of experimenting around with trying to use different types of line to express the forms that you're seeing, okay? <clears throat> so when I look at this, let me find my... You know, very clearly, like right here where this gets very dark, you get the sense that those two legs are coming together and there's, you know, compression. You know, one is against the other. There's some weight there, right? And that this leg is actually overlapping, you know, on top of this leg. See, it pushes this leg back, this one comes forward, right? Mm -hmm. Works, okay? You know, the same, same line, really. But as it transitions up here to the knee and to the top of the upper part of the leg, you've changed the line. You know, it's lighter in value, right? It's lighter right. in value. <laughs> and it it kind of gives you <clears throat> it kind of gives you the idea that there's light, you know, hitting that part of the leg. Where now on this line, see it's a little bit thicker, a little bit softer. 
right? So <laughs> it kind of like, okay, yeah, there's probably some kind of value or tone attached to that line, right? And so mm -hmm. you see, again, you know, you're thinking about the types of lines that you're making. Okay, mm -hmm. now is it perfect? No, okay, it's not perfect yet. But it is close. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's moving in the right direction, okay? And I want to encourage you to keep doing that. Slow down. Think okay. about the type of line you're making, you know, and why you're making it, what you're trying to say with it, okay? Because, okay. Can be, you know, drawing really is a language, you know? You're trying to tell a story, you know, in making those marks on the page. And so, uh, so yeah, you know, good job on that. Really nice. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay, now let's go to this drawing. Okay, so now, you know, I get it. You know, for the most part, the torso of the figure was pretty much so in some sort of shadow. Okay, it wasn't a deep shadow, but, you know, there wasn't any strong light on it. Okay, all the strong light kind of happened up at the top of the body with the arms and stuff. Now, <clears throat> okay, where you used a variety of lines in your last drawing, okay, I can see where you're trying to do the same thing here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess, you know, I would kind of encourage you, though, to, it's like, make a choice, all right? Which, which side is more in shadow? Which side is going to be more in light? And, and make it clearly one or the other, okay? So if this is gonna be a lighter outline, then maybe this can be a little bit bolder, right? Now, the reason I would probably pick this side to make it a little bit bolder is it's a nice long line, and it would kind of give you a nice flow and rhythm to the drawing, right? If you, if you kind of, you know, you made this a little, Quite a bit stronger than this side. The other thing is it would actually pull this side closer to our eye and it would let this one move back. Okay. Because she wasn't okay. really facing us straight, she was turned slightly, right? And so it would bring that part of the torso closer to us. Right? Um, so you said the right, the right side should have been a little darker? Well, a little bit thicker. Maybe bolder line, you know. I mean, if I were doing that drawing, you know, I'd be looking for that. You know, what's going to express the movement of that figure the best way possible? And you know, having this kind of nice line that's coming down from the arm, you know, to the rib cage, you know, and then you know to the hip, and then down the leg, would have made a really nice long kind of rhythmic line that would sort of express the movement of that pose. Does that make sense to you? I did want to ask you a, I did want to ask a question though, and that is you, you, you sometimes tell me that I should trust the first line that I put down. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, what happens with me is if I put the line on the left side first, mm -hmm. and then I put the line Okay, I, I'm happy with the left side. Then, then I put it on the right side. I, I have to adjust it so that it looks more like what I'm seeing. Because when I put when I, when I put the second line down, it it, it 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 doesn't really match the first line until I add some more lines to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, okay. and I guess what I would say to you is that. You know, I understand what you're saying. It's like, yeah, you want the rib cage to kind of end, you know, and kind of mirror what's going on over here. But mm -hmm. that will happen with time. Oh, okay. You know, the more you draw, the more accurate you'll get about lining those things up. You know. mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So, you know, that will come with time. You just need to draw more. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all of you, you know, you need to draw more. Okay. You know. The one, one thing that you can never do too much of is draw. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at, you know, 
she had short, she had short fat legs that were better part I know. <laughs> well, well the fact, too short. <laughs> yeah, but the fact is that they're not short and they're not fat. Okay. What you're looking at there is you're looking at an extremely foreshortened view of her mm -hmm. figure. And you chose to draw really from the hip back to the leg. And you really didn't see much of the upper leg. Now, kind of what's going on here is you see this line, which, okay, you know, as far as the weight of it and stuff goes, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's fine. Because you did have the calf, and then you have the upper leg, and you get a little compression right there, you know, where one's being pushed up over the other, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a dark line, and it's probably gonna be a little bit soft in areas. Um, but what you did is you made it a real straight line. Okay. And, that, and that's not really what it was, see? It's curved, see? Mm -hmm. we gotta, we've gotta tell people that what we're looking at is we, we're looking at an upper leg here that is very foreshortened. And the only thing that's really gonna, you know, give them the idea that, you know, that's a rounded leg is if we curve that line right there. See? Oh, okay. okay. And it, I may see. Not, it may not go all the way over to the edge. It may stop like right in there, you know, and then the, the edge down here, See, you got the corner of where the knee is, right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of have it right here. But you see, we could have broken that line right there and picked up and, and had a stronger line right under here. Oh, okay. And curved it. Because again, that's that hip. But it's the hip and it's laying down, you know, on, you know, whatever she was laying on, right? And so there's going to be some mm -hmm. kind of compression right in here. Right. So that could have been a little bolder. And again, you can exaggerate, push that curve. Again, to tell somebody, okay, that's it's it's a rounded form. It's not a straight line. Okay. Okay. You know, anytime that you're looking at a human body, you know, human body doesn't have any, and I mean any, straight lines. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's always a curve. Um you know, there, there, there is no one with straight legs. Okay, it doesn't happen. You know. Yeah, did, 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 did I kind of get some indentation on, 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 on her upper back? Yeah. Well, not the. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, right here. I'm, I'm trying to see that little light. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this this light area right here is kind of the edge of the rib cage, all right, which sits in front of the lower back, right, and you've got that muscle right in here, which is what we call the spinea, spinea erector. It's the thing that helps you stand up, right? And it is, it's, it's a rounded curved muscle and then it dips down toward the spine and there's kind of a depression, you know, that, that runs right up and down the back where the spine runs. And so, yeah, all of that, you know, feels pretty good. You know, the, the calves, you know, the size of the legs and things like that. Again, feel, you know, feel kind of appropriate for her figure. You know, she did. She had kind of thick calves. You know, she didn't have like real thin legs. Um, you know, the same thing with the buttocks, stuff like that. All of that seems to be fitting together. You know, it's mainly just this line right here could have been curved and right in here. Okay. You know, you could have, see, not, not out here at the knee, but see, it kind of picks up where this line is. You, you could break yeah. it right there, but then you got to pick it up here and bring it all the way up here. See, and it's a curve. And I, I just drew a box. Yeah, I see a new box. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't mean to do that. I just, you know, pushed That's through. Okay. But yeah, it's, it, you know, we could have done that with a curved line right there. And a dark okay. curved line to say, okay. There's some weight on there. There's some compression. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Well, thank you for sending those in. All right. Is Brock here? I thought I saw him. Brock McConnell, where are you? On the. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, remember we were 
I can't talk. We were talking about parchment. Yes. Anybody remember that conversation? I do. I do. Okay, good. I remember. All right, good. We're not all losing it, right? Some of us have some memory. Okay. Uh, and Brock brought up the fact that he had two uh, pieces of artwork that were done on vellum. And, you know, these are, these are fairly old pieces, you know, uh, and or they're copies of old pieces. Now, interestingly enough, in looking at this, I'd like to actually see the original. But my guess is, okay, if I had to make a guess, that this was actually painted on the back side of the parchment. And that you're seeing through the parchment, you know, and all the paint is on the inside. Okay? I don't understand that. Well, the parchment is not opaque. You know, if you hold it up to the light, you can actually kind of see through it. Okay. Um, and so the artist, in this case, painted on the back side of it. Oh, wow. Okay. Which protects the paint in the long term because the parchment seals it, right? And uh, if you look at the back of the painting, here's the back of the painting. And I haven't quite been able to make out exactly what that says. Um, you know. Latin. Yeah. It's definitely Latin. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, this is, this is actually Latin. <laughs> And, and so they use this as a cover sheet, you know, uh, and it's a page out of a book or something. Um, could you know, it be the artist, artist name? It could be. It could be. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is how it's framed on the back. And, um, you know, Are you saying like, that the, the parchment, parchment paper was recycled? No, I don't think it was recycled. Um, you know. I think it was, yeah, the, the artist painted it in reverse, you know, on the back. What um, is the print? The guess, is the print, the print on the front? No. Or is that just a front? Uh, what, what, just you're, a what you're seeing here is you've got a piece of glass, okay. and then you've, got, then you've got the parchment. But the parchment, okay. if you rub the, your finger on it, you mm -hmm. won't feel any paint on it because the paint, it's actually on the back side of it. And the parchment is translucent or transparent, so the color, all the paint color is coming through. So the printed uh, parchment on the back has nothing to do with oh, the, the one. Oh, the no, this is, yeah, this is not, yeah, this is just a cover sheet. And, it, okay. and, and they somebody used an old book or something like that. Yes. This is a very okay. uh -huh. You know, and they, they used a page out of the book you know, basically to cover, uh, basically work as a dust jacket for the back of the painting. You know, I've never seen that done before, but okay. You know, I, if they didn't have any other paper, yes. you no, know, why not? Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is his other piece. He has two of them. You know? And I, I believe these are probably Italian, you know, um, from Italy. And again, same technique. <laughs> You know, again, painted in reverse, you know, on the back side of the paper, you know, on a translucent piece of parchment. Mm -hmm. you know. Charles, how, how old do you think they are? How old are they? I really don't know, but I'd probably say, you know, 17, 1800s, you know, at wow. least, you know, maybe even older. Um, so what type of skin, <laughs> what type of parchment animal is that? It could be pig, it could be cow, it could be sheep, it could be any. Because they made parchment out of all kinds of animal skin. You know, and you know. So what would they do animal. like with, with cowhide, which would be thick? Would they just keep scraping it now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they, they could actually cut it into thin, you know, shave it into thin sheets. You know, you, you probably couldn't get like big, big swatches of it, you know, but you could probably shave, you know, like little pieces like that off, you know, plenty big enough, you know, to do a small piece of art like that. Um, so it could Charles, be- Charles, can I have a question? Sure. Mm -hmm. 
are you saying that this painting here was painted on the back and it came through and this is what it's showing yeah oh okay yeah because if you if you look at a lot of old parchment you know they they could shave it down to where it was really thin and really translucent you know and and so when you paint it on the back of it you could see you know on the that, side, that, see an image would this act like a mirror then it act like a what would it be like a mirror i mean if you paint it on the other side and show it this way they had to they had to paint it backwards yes yeah that's yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I know it's 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 almost like painting on a piece of glass, you know that you're gonna that you're gonna look on the other, you know, the the other side. So you really have to think. You got to put your little drawing, your details, and then you put your blocks of color down over that, and that way when you look at it from the other side, you know it works. So there's why a. Would, why, why would they choose to do that? I mean, it seems like it would be much harder. Um, well, it, it, well, yes, there's, <laughs> yes, it would be a skill that you would have to learn. But the thing is, uh, think about the environment, you know, when this art was created, uh, think about the environment that it had to live in. And also remember too, that they didn't have sheet glass back then. You know, windows, you know, in a lot of like Renaissance buildings were open. You know, because they didn't have sheet glass. You know, they had stained glass, right? And so they didn't have a lot of clear glass that they could put over a piece of paper, which is why they painted on the reverse side when they put it in a frame. The parchment wow. itself would protect the paint. So Charles, was this called a specific type of uh, work of art that they're doing, like the translucent, smoky look? Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's got you know, a more descriptive name, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, what okay. it is, yeah. you know, I would have yeah. to research and find out. Okay. And if you want, I will, you know, I'll, I'll try to look and see if I can. Was, what, wasn't, there so, wasn't there sort of a uh, pre-Renaissance pre period when a lot of it was done on parchment, particularly the uh, religious uh, paintings? Well, yes, there, yes. Yeah, there, there was, yes, before the Renaissance, yes, there were pieces of art being done. Looking at the style of this, this is post-Renaissance. Okay. First of all, it's not necessarily a religious subject matter. It's more kind of day-to-day right, -day life. Also, look at the perspective of it. You know, it, it doesn't look, you know, like, a, you know, like, like something out of the Gothic. Period. So, uh, you know, it's more post Renaissance. That's, that's what I'm saying. Probably, you know, probably 1800s, could be as old as 1700s. You know, uh, I would be shocked and amazed if it went back to the 1600s, you know, but it could. You know, materials, you know, would certainly have been available at that point in time. So, uh, you know, but the style and everything of it is, you know, probably, you know, post-Renaissance. Okay. You know, plus the fact that it's, it's, it's kind of a slice of life, you know, everyday people. It's kind of a, you know, kind of a domestic scene. Um, so the subject matter would kind of fit into that period of time. Now this is a drawing that Brock sent, and I think I think it was supposed to be a self-portrait. You know, I would guess that it is. Um, kind of, you know, kind of looks like him. Um, he, has the, he has the lines in there, like like the, the, the heads he showed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was trying to find the overall, uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. structure, I see that. division, uh -huh. side playing, front playing, yeah. center playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was looking for all that stuff, you know, in the drawing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and it, it does kind of look like him, you know, though I think he's, he's got a little bit longer, lower face, you know, than he's given himself, you know. Um, then, well, let's see. Yeah, okay, we'll just go right through. So these are mine, okay. 
Okay, that's my girl in the chair. And then this is the woman who was standing. I just ended up doing the upper body and the arms. You know, and since most of the light was really on her face and her arm right there, that's kind of what I focused on. And then this is the, uh, you know, the, the longer figure, about a 30 minute drawing. And Bernice, you here? Yes, yes, I'm here. Yeah, so you see what I'm saying here? You know how this is kind of rounded? And then it kind yeah. of stops. Uh -huh. And then you pick up this line right here and see how it kind of sweeps. And, uh, and it emphasizes that idea. There, there still looks like there's pressure there, you know, but it, it's not a flat straight line. You know, it's, it's more, right. it looks fuller and rounder, okay? And then okay. you get the knee, you know, poking out behind it, and then you get- Oh, oh her, her, her legs are thick, aren't they? They are, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, she, no, she oh, was I mean, not- that's, that's yeah, not They weren't as thick as mine, but they were thick. <laughs> yeah, she didn't- well, yeah, did, did, Oh, oh that's, uh, okay, <laughs> yes. This is made with char, yeah, that's what it looked that nice. Yes. Made by you, Charles. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, these are yeah. mine. Yeah, and then this is the little demo that we did, right? Talking about, you know, line and then line and tone. And, you know, how you can use both. You know, when you put them together, you know, they, they work, you know, to really describe a lot of different things going on about, you know, the light, but also the surface and what it's doing, you know, how it's turning. Okay. And then, um, you know, there's a funny looking drawing of me. So, something I did not long ago. Um, then Claudia sent in some stuff. Okay. Claudia, you around? Yes, I'm here. There we go. Okay, I didn't see you, so. You know. All right. So, now, this is a piece of parchment, and you said that Sharon did this, right? Sass? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Sass. Mm -hmm. uh, did anybody know Sharon? She was she taught calligraphy at a lot of the different centers. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful calligraphy. When you know too fast and you win. My mom took some calligraphy, but I'm not sure who the teacher was. That was Sass. Yeah, that was. Okay. Yeah. yeah, she calls herself Sass. Her her name is Sharon. And Smith, I think. And Smith? Okay, there we I go. Think so, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, really nice. But yeah, you know, she's retired now. You know, she was a trip. She was a lot of fun to work with. <laughs> oh, it's great. But, you know, she did beautiful calligraphy work. Um, you know, I mean, really very talented artist. But her thing was really calligraphy. And um, mm -hmm. and this this is pretty straightforward, you know, text. But what she really liked to do is she really liked to play with letter forms and, and you know, play with the design of letter forms and kind of put them together in interesting compositions. And uh, I, I saw a fair amount of her work. It was really beautiful stuff. So, you know, she was always coming out with something, uh, you know, something that, kind of unique and interesting. That hangs on a roll. You know, it'll roll up. Or the hand. Yeah, yeah. From the top, I, I, can, I, can, I can tell from the top it looks like a roll. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, a, it's a scroll. Top and the bottom, yeah. That's very nice. Okay, so Claudia, you ready to jump into uh, like your sister? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, so Claudia sent this in. This, now, Claudia started this painting. Um, Actually, when I was doing Saturday classes, she, she began this. And I remember seeing it a couple of different times when she was working on it. And so this, this was her sister. This is the photograph of her. And um, now this is your sister that passed away, right? Yeah, she's passed away. She's the, was the my oldest sister, mother of 13, uh, oh, wow. an, educate, an educator and, a, and an evangelist. Beautiful, wow. beautiful. How cool. Yes. Yeah. So, now, now, I want you to notice a couple of things about the photograph of her, okay? Um, first of all, you know, look at, you know, the structure of her face, okay? And Armando, this will help yes. you. So, really clearly here, we can see where the side plane of the face begins, 
So you, anything in shadow back here is that side plane. Everything from this point across to here, really right at just before the edge, is the front plane. And then when you start picking up the shadow again, again, that's part of the side plane. So you could see actually three, you know, really in reality, four planes on her face. You can see the, the three planes here and you can see the bottom because her head, you know, was looking at you, but it was slightly tipped up. So you can see the bottom side of the jawline right here. So you have to describe four different planes, right? And what's happening, you know, with the light on each of those. And the, the funny thing is the light's not gonna be the same on any of them, right? It's all going to change because they're all in different orientations toward the light source. Now, you know, she has, you know, some really, really strong, clear features on her. If you look at her eye socket, right, here's the top of her eye socket, right at the brow ridge, right? And in her particular case, um, it's real subtle, but you can also see the bottom of the eye socket. And it's right here where the light is, you know, catching right there, because from here down, you know, that's the zygomatic uh, bone right there, the, the cheekbone. And Arch. The, yeah. But, you know, you see, and it makes a real clear difference, you know, between the cheekbone, you know, and that eye socket right in there. And, and it really is a round shape. You know, it's, it's a circle. You know, and so her eyeball is actually that big. The opening for her eye is not, okay? And there's nothing, you know, around that eyeball that's flat. You know, if you begin to look right here in the corner, you know, you get a highlight, you know, right here on that edge. But then look what happens with the value, right? As it moves around the eye, see? And it's, you know, goes from lighter to darker. There's a gradation. So we are talking about trying to lay down, you know, smooth gradation. And this is a case where to really make that eye feel like it's round. Now you've got to get those transitions in value, you know, across this eyelid. You see her eyelid really all the way up into here. Now this is called the epicanic fold, right? And so there's a kind of a, a thicker piece of skin that actually sits over that smaller part of the eyelid that goes up under it right here, which is very thin, okay? And then on the bottom, again, you see, again, you know, there's like this small edge and it, it's kind of tipped forward and then it hits this thicker piece of skin and it kind of sits, you know, and, and attaches to the cheekbone. So there's kind of a curve here. Right? So there's this this shape right in there that we've got to describe, you know, with, with the change in value. And everything that happens on this side happens on this side as well. See, and you can see it, you know, really clearly. See, it comes up to here, hits that little edge, and then starts moving forward, and then all the way up, you know, to the top of the eyeball. And so when you're describing those forms, you've really got to think of them not as being flat shaped, but as being actual round forms. You know? uh, same thing with the nose. You know, there's nothing flat about her nose. You know, she's got a side plane here, and right here is the dividing point between the side and the top plane. And her top plane of her nose is fairly even. You know, it doesn't get like real narrow at one end, real thick at the other. It's, it's pretty consistent all the way down to the ball of the nose. Okay? And then again, right here, it gets darker and you pick up that side plane, you know, moving back down to the cheek again. Uh, and then you get the ball that sits in front of everything right there. And the two no nostrils that are kind of attached to it. 
So, you know, when, when you're painting a portrait, you really have to look at where things kind of start to stop. And sometimes it's real subtle. So let's see how you did, Claudia. Well, well you know, I did a, a painting first. And I call myself trying to, uh, to put in the dogs first, mm -hmm. uh, where the dogs were on the underpainting. Mm -hmm. But then when the paint dried, it just kind of like disappeared and things weren't happening. So it looks, and, and you know, uh, I tend to kind of like try to blend it by smoothing instead of just leaving the paint just right on there. Uh, I can see a lot of things you were talking about. I put the paint on, but then when it dries, it looked different. So, and I was trying to put that shadow on the side, uh, on the on the right side plane again over there. And uh, when it dried, it just looked artificial, looked funny. Is this is this oil, Claudia? Mm -hmm. Yes, oil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so it was trying to get those various. Um, um, uh, uh, tonations on here, uh, and um, I mean the and get her eyes like they're supposed to be because I realized that her eyes were were kind of like puffy, uh, and she had had a stroke on the um, uh, the right side of her face, and well, the left side of her face, our right, her left, I think it was, yeah. and that's why her. Um, her eye was a little closed, more closed on that side, but um, I, I wasn't. I, I wasn't getting the essence of her. So I know I was doing a lot of things wrong uh, because um, part of it was um, different uh, from what the picture was showing. Even though the picture was not a great picture, it still I wasn't. I was. I would try to, you know, make it uh, have those. Uh, different um, phases of the of the, of, of the lightness and the darkness, and um, to, to, uh, to denote change in the in the structure of the face itself. But then when it dried, it, I was still wasn't getting it. So uh, I was I was putting the paint, but it, it, I was doing some things wrong, and I wasn't uh, uh, making it um, go like I was supposed to go. So. I said, okay, I'm, 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 I'm working, I'm putting time on task, but if you're doing something wrong, you're just, you're not getting anywhere. So you need to get some expert uh, assessment and critique of um, that. So, okay. so that's where I am right now. So let me point a couple things out to you about this, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, your overall proportions are pretty good, okay? Um, what I'm looking at here with the angle of the jawline is mm -hmm. you need to lower this side of the jaw a little bit. There's, it's a little bit longer. So there's a little okay. more length over here than you've got. Um, and again, we talked what did about- I, What did I think? What did I think that maybe th that one was that the one on the right, uh, her, her right and my left, uh, is, was too long. Another one. So uh, I thought, I thought, I thought I made uh, the, the uh, her right right over here. Yes, uh huh. I thought I made that too long, and the other one was okay. No, you think uh, I need to make the other one longer? Because it's not they're not even because the head is a little tilt. Yeah, um, yeah. You could maybe bring this one up a little bit. You know, with with a little more dark right in here. Take out some of that light raise that up and that would that would balance it out a little bit more um but you know the, the main thing here that you're missing so far uh -huh. Uh -huh. is that side playing front playing relationship okay mm -hmm. if this if this is going to be the darker value right then all of this is too dark okay now you've got a choice here go either way you can either lighten up the values you know in this area around her nose and her cheeks and and let this all be lighter right in contrast to this and leave this the way it is and or and or 
your other choice is to push the value darker on the side planes on both sides. And then that will bring this back kind of in range again. Okay. But right now, you know, your dark value, you've got it over here right in the middle of the face and it doesn't happen that way. You know, if you look at her, look at the contrast. See, there's not nearly as much contrast with in, in her nose area as there mm -hmm. is between the front and the side plane. And yet in your painting, you've got them about equal. See, this is almost as dark as that, okay? And it can't be. Uh, well, that needs to be darker and lighten up the nose. Um, well, yeah, I, like I said, I would go one of two ways. Don't do both, just one or the other. You could either push the value darker here and leave the contrast the way you've got it here, right? And see, again, that would turn that side plane and then that would put that nose on the front plane of the face if you darken this. The other thing is, leave this, if, if you think this is dark enough already, then leave it alone and lighten up your values in here overall because there's nothing all that dark, you know, in, in reality when you look at her face. Oh, okay. Okay. See, if you squint your eye down, you know, where it's darkest is over on the right side and over on the left side. Everything in the middle, yeah, you get some mid-tones and things in there, but generally it's overall pretty much so light. Okay? Yeah. Well, I know that that side of the face is uh, in part of shadow because I think there's a little shadow on the, that's, uh, the, uh, the hat and inside of the hat on that side. Mm -hmm. So... So it has to have some shadow over there. Yeah, this, this side of the hat is a little bit darker than, than the other side over here. Yeah. Right. See, it doesn't yeah. quite get as dark over there. Yeah. Well, it's a... Not yeah, to get really right out to the edge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well... Um, Claudia, I, this is Gwen. I got a question. Was this a flash uh, photograph? I have no idea. I just got it from um, one of my, my niece that had uh, a, a photo. And I liked the head, but I didn't want, I was, since I was doing a portrait, I didn't want it, uh, I didn't want to, to, to do the, um, the, the, all of the, I didn't want the body part with the, per, per, with the, with the flower and all of that. I just wanted to, uh, I didn't want the lack of photograph. So I used one of her, another picture that had her with that, uh, the bottom part. So I used the head from one photo. And the body part from body another. Part of another. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a good idea. That was a good idea. It's Claudia, Claudia, you know, the likeness is very good, though. Claude. The likeness is really good because if I had never met your sister and saw this, it looks like her. Oh, yeah. Well, well thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we have a long way to go, but we're, we're trying, you know. I, I, I keep telling her, yeah. I like the, like um, uh, Michael, I like uh, Michelangelo. Uh, speak to me, okay, sister. <laughs> speak to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I work on paintings of my, my 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 relatives and stuff like that, I yeah. I, I, get, I get to be one with them, and right. they, I can get in it. But yeah. she's I guess I waited. She's been she's passed too long ago. I guess I don't know what's happened. But you know. <laughs> no, it looks good though. It does. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, I, think, on I think once you get the value structure, you know, closer. You know, she'll be there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she she has a she has about uh, uh, ten children that are still living, and so I think they do would like to see a picture of their mom. Yes. <laughs> a painting. Of very mom. nice. Very nice. Oh, well, yeah. it's not the grandchildren. Well, oh, the grandchildren. That's a, that's another. About yeah. ten children are probably about thirty, forty grandchildren, and about. 20 great grand. <laughs> wow, that's a legacy. That's a legacy yeah, there. Yeah, it yes. is. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, one thing I would kind of encourage you to do, okay? Uh huh. Because in your email, you were asking about the background. And right yes, now, uh -huh. just, yeah, I mean, the color and the value generally is fine, okay? Uh, as kind of an initial block in. But as you move mm -hmm. up again to, you know, finish 
the background. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to hit this with maybe two or three more layers of paint. Um, okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't don't flatten it out. Okay, don't flatten it out. You know, let let a little bit of brushwork and stuff show in there. Let there be a little okay. or something okay. going on. The reason okay. being that you know the dress and the hat and everything else are kind of graphic and, and kind of smooth and, and blended and you want to mm -hmm. separate the background away from it so you know the more you smooth this out the more it's going to kind of flatten the paint okay okay so let it be you know a little looser a little bit rougher back there um you know there can be some value changes and things going on it doesn't all have to be you know one even value um you know, and let that be a little more painterly, you know, to contrast, you know, the work that you did, you know, in rendering her. Um, okay. You know, the looser you keep this, the tighter and more finished this is going to look. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Was this cool. black, or mm -hmm. did you mix the colors? Uh, I, 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 well, <laughs> I had. You know how we, we work on a, on a piece of, 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 of art and we do something that we like and we just kind of scribble it out, just kind of like wipe it out and everything. And I had, and I had did that with part of the, uh, of the form of the coating that I was doing. And, and, and then once I did it, I, I didn't go back to it and it sat there for like a year or two. And, and I, I tried to use some, uh, um, some of the, um, uh, the, what do you call it? The, um, Tolanoid, tolanoid, and and lift it out. It only lifts so far. I mean, it was dried in there. I could not get it out. <laughs> so I said, okay. I, so I, I start putting black on the back and see if I could really save it because it's right behind her her head, back there, all back there. And and I and 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 so I said, okay, I'm gonna go with it. And I put. I said I thought maybe some green to go in it, some um some sap green and some darker green to kind of blend. I thought that would be okay with, with the, the red. She had the red on. And well, so it- Yeah, it's muted. So, it's a dark yeah. complement to the red. Yes, uh-huh. So, yeah. so, so I, I'll try to work that out the, using that green and black uh, to make some various kinds of shades of, of um, back for the background. Uh -huh. some color. Yeah. So that's all I could do. Yeah, and they could. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put a pendant on her also. She gave me a pendant, and um, um, she, she had a lot of pendants and stuff. And she gave me one of the pendants, and I'm gonna put the pendant on her on her chest, on her right chest. And I'm going to put her put a, a earring, one of my earrings, on her ear. Oh, that's nice. So when, yeah, when you're so, saying on, she had earring. When you're saying mm -hmm. on the right, are you saying over here or are you saying over here like her right? On her right, yes, the other right. Right here. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh, yes, right in there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, oh. so a little uh, a pendant. The one it, it was hers and she gave it to me and I have it. I'm gonna I'm just gonna put it on there. Okay. And you can give some kind of kinship to the picture, you know. That's where <laughs> mm -hmm. I yeah. do. So okay. All right. Yeah, very nice. Very All right. nice. Anybody else got anything to they want to add in? I'm, I'm open for suggestions. I'm, I'm definitely open for suggestions, you know? <laughs> so are you working on this currently, Claudia? Yes. Okay. Well, you great, got a great start. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it, it's, it's still going to take a while, you know? Because you, 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 know, you have to sit back and let it dry and see what it looks like and mm -hmm. dry a little bit, you know? And, Mm. And so I'm, I'm not in a hurry. Uh, I'm just going because it's been so long. I just want, want it to be right. I want to get it, yeah. get it right. Yeah. So. And she looked younger here in, the, in your paint. Hmm? She, she looked younger in your paint. Right. Yeah, well, I, I, think at that, I think at this point she was like in her 70s. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. She looked like, like maybe in her 40s. Yeah. 70s. yeah, well, the painting doesn't look like her 70s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, oh. I just wanted to I just wanted to resemble her so they could say, Oh, that's Nana. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll recognize it for sure, not a no doubt, you know. Yeah. Oh, but but that, that eye she when she had a stroke, I mean mm -hmm. she had a minor stroke and didn't realize she had 
until her mouth twisted and her eye was twisted. Yeah. And uh, so this is after recovery, but you know, still okay. you can see the signs. If you knew it before, you could know the signs okay. and, yeah. and, the, and the, the photo caught all of that. So mm -hmm. I, I, I can't do it like it was before because I don't, <laughs> and you wouldn't want to because when she wore that outfit, she had, that's what it was. So. Mm -hmm. Still so you don't have favorite. earlier pictures of her? Oh, I have one when she when she was married. I mean, she was like a, a, a teenager, like 17, 18. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's too young. Yeah, I have different ones, but, you know, cool ones, yeah. Yeah. I like this. This, this is, you know, she, at this point, she had finished her education, and she was an evangelist. She had the teaching, and, you know, so... This is on the other side, so uh, I like it. I mean, I, I, I like the photo of her. I'm trying to emulate that. You know? And I probably would have did better if I left her with an open uh, uh, collar, you know, than the, what I put on there. But. Yeah, you know. I mean, I, I, I kind of like what you've done, you know, with the dress and, and everything so far. Yeah. So I think it's just, you know, really... If you want to put the pendant on there, that's fine, you know. But it's it's just working out the face and getting it. Yeah. What what I did what I didn't want to do is just have uh, do a painting of a photo that was just like the photo. I wanted to have a, just a little bit different than the photo, uh, you know. If you, if you could do that, and so I I could do that by just putting a different dress on her, a different suit on her. <laughs> like like you said, with, 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 with the pin that you're going to put on and everything, yeah. uh -huh. you're going to make it more personable. That's know? right. Uh -huh. and then you're going to put some earrings on it that you like. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, si what size is your uh, canvas? Uh, I think it's about 18 by, 18 by 24, or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. At least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was about What's 18 by 24. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. It's been Charles, can you move it up a little bit? Can you? Pardon? Um, can you move the picture up a little bit? Because it looks like there's more to it than yeah. Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then you yeah, then you end up. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm off the head. Okay. Uh, I just want to see what's down yeah. there. Okay. Thank you. Right, right, right. Uh, all right. So moving on. All right. We got Mr. John Gigliotti. Yeah. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. You're welcome. Whoa. So here's here's John, and that's the well, that's not John, but you know. <laughs> John. Not John. Not John. Not John. Not John. He's got something to explaining to do. And I, <laughs> let's not go down there. Okay. So no, well, let's back off, guys. <laughs> so this is this is his drawing, okay, from Friday. All right. Um, so a couple things, John. All right. One, you did much better at laying down values. They don't look as oh, scratchy okay. and stuff. So it's getting better. Right. Okay. Um, right. Now the thing is, and, and this is for everybody, when you're trying to draw in shadows, There are going to be changes in value within the shadow, but you don't start off drawing those differences. You start off by figuring out what's on the light side, what's on the dark side, and making everything on the dark side kind of an equal value, okay? Now that doesn't mean that you're getting real dark with it at first. You know, it's kind of, you're just separating light and shadow. And once you have a nice even tone all over the shadow side, then you can go back in and you can push your darts, right? Because if you don't do that, one of the things that's inevitably going to happen as you start working on the light side and trying to put in those transitional values on the light is that eventually what you'll find is that your lights will get as dark as some of your values on the shadow side and then it doesn't work anymore okay because again you've got to keep those sets of values different all the values on the shadow side are going to be darker than anything that's on the light right 
right? The light can't get as dark as anything on the shadow side. It just can't, right? So they've got to be two distinct sets of values. Um, and if you wanted to go numbers, right? Zero being white, you know? Uh, so you probably don't want to go over about a three or a four over here on the light side. And that leaves you from five to 10 over here on the shadow side. Say. But you can't have any fours over here, and you can't have any fives or sixes over here. They've got to stay on different sides of the body. You know, wherever the light is, that's one range. Wherever the dark is, that's another. That's what we refer to as local value. Okay. What's the range of value in the shadows? What's the range of values in the light? Okay. Anybody got any questions about that? Come on. Well, but by the by the time I figure out, okay, the dark dark darker value is over here. The light is in the midnight. My my my, my twenty minutes have gone by. Okay. Well, that's you know, and that's fine. Again, it's you know, if you don't get into getting all the details and stuff in the shadow side, that's fine. At least you've indicated that's shadow, that's light. That's the first step. Okay. All right. As you get faster, then you can get more in there, okay? But separating out the two is gonna be really important, right? Because you gotta make a distinction between light and shadow. Um, otherwise, you end up with values all over the place and you know, then you can't really control things like in this particular drawing. Um, you know, you've got some really nice light areas and dark areas here, which would really generally help pull this forward. But then right. you back here with the back, and then your contrast between this line and the areas of the leg are actually stronger in value, in contrast, than up here. And this is closer to us. So if you really want this to come forward, you have to have more contrast up here, less here. And so, again, you know, if you would have just laid kind of a light tone over, over like the back of the legs, even though there was a little bit of light on there, uh -huh. you know, again, that would have helped kind of unify this and push it back behind this area of the drawing right here, the, you know, the arms and the chest and shoulder. That would have all come forward for you. Okay. And I so, realize we're supposed to send our drawings into it. Pardon? I didn't realize you're supposed to send our drawings then to you that, that we did during class. You don't have to. You know, no. it's not a rule that you have to. But if, you know, if you want to kind of know what you're doing well, what you maybe need to work on, you know, then send them in. Oh. Just, just like with your painting, you know, if you want to know what's going on with your painting and what you might do differently or how you might think about it a little bit differently. You know, send it in so we can look at it. You know, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give you my observations. <laughs> okay, that's all I can do. All right, uh, let's go to your other drawings before we go to your painting. All right. So now this is uh, the girl that was reclining in the chair. Okay. All right. Now I want to point something out to you. Um, you've got the idea of her laying back in the chair. But you've got uh -huh. pretty much almost straight up and down on the page. Almost what? Almost straight up and down on the page. You know, she uh, doesn't okay. really yeah, look okay. like she's. Right. Yeah. And and maybe. It looks like it looks like he was just running. He was running out of the page, so he had to kind of straighten up. <laughs> right. like he would have ran off, ran off the page. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, he kind of he kind of tipped her up, you know, to get her actually to fit on the page. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, she, she doesn't quite feel like she's really laying down, you know, the way that we were seeing her. Um, and so, again, you know, kind of think about how you're going to place it on the page, the composition. And then as far as the values and things go, again, you're getting better, you know, at laying down that tone and kind uh -huh. of pulling it back and softening it a bit. Yeah, these, these drawings are much softer 
than some of the things that you had turned in earlier. Okay. Okay. And okay. So, so again, I'm, I'm glad to see you working on that. Um, but again, think about, make a decision, you know, what's in light, what's in shadow. And it's going to be one or the other, you know, it's no in between. Uh, and then again, treat those shadows, simplify them, put down an overall tone for anything that's in shadow. And then everything in light, leave light. And then just, again, as you're putting in the values on the light side, make sure not to push them so dark that they get close to what you're seeing in the shadows. Because you gotta separate them. Okay? Okay. Okay. Um, then we have your cactus paintings. Yes. So John went to the Wild West over the weekend. And he's out there. <laughs> getting, getting tired of the cold. <laughs> yeah. So he's out there with the uh, saguaro cactus. So I would say that this is what in like uh, southern Arizona. That area, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah it's it's really, nice. It's that's nice. That's the only place in America that saguaro cactus grow. So. Good job, John. This is pastel. Are those mountains in the back? Uh, yeah, a watercolor. It's that, watercolor. Is it yeah. mountains back there? Mm -hmm. uh, the hills are mountains back there? It's sort of mountains. Supposed to represent like more of the uh, the mesa, the uh, erosion type. Uh, but I, I call it a mirage that everything is not detailed, but just sort of wavy. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was those red, 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 red mountains in Nevada. Yeah, well, they're yeah, yeah, the, uh, sandstone. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the, uh, the color. Good job, everything. John. I like it. You know, I, I do, I do, I do, I do have a question though. That's the color. That is on the left side where the red flowers are. Would that necessarily have been that light? You mean on the right side? Between the flowers. When it's not that light. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Not my other right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, on the right side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would, would, it, would it have been as light as between the flower as it is, since the rest of it seemed to be a little darker? Okay, now what's your question? Should it be as light back here? Yeah, should, shouldn't, that, shouldn't that be a little more pink or something uh, rather than as white as it is? Uh, not necessarily. Oh, okay. Uh, it, could, it could be, mm -hmm. it could be light back behind there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I do understand what you're, what you're seeing though, because he's, he's got kind of this shape in here. It's kind of a triangle that's light and then the dark on top of it. And I guess the question is, <clears throat> why is there, why is there not more light back here? You know, it's all kind of mm -hmm. so. so. And, um, Do you have the reference, John? What's that? Do you have the reference? I was asking if you had sent the reference, and was this from a photograph? No. I actually was just playing around, and I, I was not going to do this desert type scene. I had put in my sky and middle ground, and as I looked at it, it sort of reminded me of the. Uh, Mesa Desert, and so uh, it just uh, all just so it came out out of my head. Okay, so there is. No I did look up. I did look up some flowering plants and cactus afterwards, but yeah. All right, so that answers the question. I mean, there was no real reference to look at, and um, but you know, you pulled off the idea of it being Southwest, you know, in that area. And certainly the cactus are recognizable in the plants. And, you know, like I said, generally your color range, things like that, make it feel like that part of the country. You know? So, yeah, I mean, I, it's a nice piece. Um, Thank you. Yes. I'm trying to think. You know, I mean, everything works really nicely as far as the contrast in this area really pulling, you know, this part of the painting forward. And then you don't move straight back this way. You kind of move back this way. And it gets right. further, further away. 
as you as you move back into this area. Um, right. But you know, you get a nice sense of depth in it. You know, so you know, I don't know that I would do really anything different to it. Um, you know, you certainly got the contrast and the intensity of the color here uh, to pull that forward, and then this is much softer and it sits back and it's got some nice distance. You know, the hard thing in doing something like this a lot of times is that people will overwork. You know, this, you know, this, this, these rocks and stuff. And so they won't sit back as far. And, you know, you've done a nice job of keeping it kind of soft and still feeling like it's got the structure of rock so that it, you know, it's not moving, you know, right if you're on top of it. So. That's a good job. Uh, yeah, I, was, I was trying to get the idea of a, a mirage feeling where the heat sort of distorts and wavy and you're looking through not a clear reality. Yeah, so it, it, yeah, it acts to soften everything down. Right. Um, yeah, and I'd say you got pretty close to it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I would do anything different really to it. Uh, as far as the composition, everything, I mean, it's, it's all, you know, it's really kind of nice to put together. It's a nice little piece. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. If you were already famous, it would be worth something. Pardon? It's what? It's if you were famous already, that would, that would be really worth something. <laughs> well, you know, um, <laughs> You know, he's still here. He could become famous still. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I, have a, I, have a, I have a friend who is waiting to collect all my paintings after I'm gone. Make fortunes. <laughs> What's well, going up a bit right now? Right. <laughs> Uh, I will. I will accept bits. Okay. We're, we're gonna have a little auction going on right here. Okay. Right. Okay. All, right. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's move on. Let's see. Because we got June. We got Rebecca. Who else? Uh, yeah, we got quite a few from June. And then yeah, we got quite a few from Rebecca. Okay. Good. All right. So these are June's drawings from Friday. Okay. All right. So June. All right. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. So when I'm looking at your drawing, okay. Uh, like up here in the front, you know, because this uh -huh. is closer to us. Yes. You, you could have pushed the darks in this hair and in the shadow in here. If that were darker, right? then that front would, the front part of her body would come more forward, you know, and you could leave everything else back here kind of the way it is, okay? Oh, uh, okay. But okay. That, could, that would really help that front come forward because what's happening okay. right now is you see you've mm -hmm. got a few, you've got like a, a few really, really strong accents of dark, like right here, mm -hmm. the yeah. chin, Right here, the legs, the legs, the feet, the edges of the feet, and and so those values, they're kind of evenly distributed all through the drawing, right? And what it does is it it brings the feet and everything closer to okay. us, okay? And really, what you want to bring closer to us is right here. You know? Okay. So, so really push, you know, push this hair at least as dark as this, if not darker. Okay. Okay. And okay. as soon as you start making this hair darker and some of the shadows mm -hmm. on here a little bit darker, all of this will start moving forward. Okay. 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 Now, Thank as far you. as like your overlapping shapes and forms and things like that, so you've got the shoulder and then the rib cage comes down here and that feels like it all sits in front of this midsection, you know, of her abdomen. And then you get the mm -hmm. neck, right? And then you get the yeah. leg, and then you get the two legs behind that. So, you know, all the overlapping shapes are working for you. It's just, again, 
you know, mainly the value contrast that would make a lot of difference in the drawing, okay? Okay, thank you. So push your values. Okay. Um, in this drawing, okay, uh, kind of the same idea, okay? Um, okay. And you've got more contrast in here, and this is the area that's closer to us, and then as it moves back, see, you've simplified the drawing, and you don't have as much of a, a value change back here, and that's good mm -hmm. because, see, it lets this sit back, and it makes us look up in here, because that's kind of the area that you wanted us to look at, because uh, you got mm -hmm. more range and value. So, so that part's working pretty well. Um, so this is the light, you know, the light's coming from here. Um, one thing you might think about, when, when you have situations like this where the light comes up against, mm -hmm. you know, like the white of the page. Uh, yes. Like right in here, you might just put a little bit of a tone. If you oh, okay. put a little tone here, then that mm -hmm. highlight along the edge of the leg would pop out. Okay. See, but right now you lose it because it's kind of this light <laughs> edge against the light of the paper. Right? Yeah. But yeah, okay. I mean, you don't have to color in everything. You know, really just a little bit like right in here. You know, mm -hmm. give us that edge, okay. you know, up to the edge of the chair. And you'd be able to see that. And then as soon okay. as you got the highlight over here, then that would make, you know, that feel rounder. Wow. And then that leg would be closer to us, right? Or going yeah. underneath the other one. So again, you know, just contrast. Um, okay. Same thing here, okay? So most of your contrast right now is really right down in this area, in the lower part of her body. Yeah. And, you know, and maybe that's what you wanted, you know, to get, you know, get the roundness of the legs and the hips and stuff. And if that's what you wanted, it's working, okay? Because, you know, that's kind of where we focus, is down you know, around her thighs and her knees and her hips. Um, and then this is a little bit lighter, so it's there, but it's not the focal point, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, again, you know, depending on the effect that you wanted, you know, this is working, you know, as far as keeping your focus down here, because you've got more contrast here, okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Then we have your lovely craftsman house. So, so tell us about tell us about your craftsman house. Where is that at? And just that we went to a couple of times to to go over there to join. And it's a Sandy Spring heritage, heritage. Oh, heritage. Okay. Uh, heritage, yeah. Yeah, heritage, heritage Sandy Springs. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. I see. So you would have been over on the side where Kroger is looking at the, the house, right? No. It's the fire stack. No, is I'm very below too. Is yeah. it the north? Are you on the north side or the south side of the house? They have was the. Uh, yeah I, think, yeah, I think she would have. I think I think that's the south side because I work. I have worked there many years, and I think that that's the side that has the fireplace on it. And I believe that's the south side. Well, yeah, so, if you're down if you're down on the green, you'd okay. look up the hill, and you'd see the fireplace. So right. it's it's the yeah. side away from the street. Right. Yeah. So on the back side of it. Okay. All right. Okay. Very nice. Yeah, we're nicely you... done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other day we have the activity over there. We have the group. Oh. We, uh, it's a beautiful day. It's a chilly, but it's a pretty day. Yeah. So this this is when we were having classes over there, right? That you drew this? Yes. 
we 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 stay over there for the 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 zip mm -hmm. how to call outside they have the they have the it's a very nice uh, zip zipper i want like uh, uh outside we uh i think we have the model over there model yeah, we did the, let, yeah yeah, we we just have... everybody inside, not outside. Inside a little bit, they have to, you can see the outside. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, we've we've gone over there and painted many, many times. You know, sometimes there's we would stay in the gazebo, which was right down below the yeah house. gazebo. Yeah, yeah. This is this is just uh, you can see this building from the gazebo. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, and then. I wanted to talk to you about your 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 painting of this lady's face. It's kind of a deconstructed painting, which is a uh, you know kind of an interesting idea all in itself. <laughs> now, is this acrylic? Is it oil paint? It looks a little bit like acrylic. acrylic. Okay, acrylic. Yeah, I thought it might be. Yeah, I just want to study some color. How to like. <laughs> harder for me to use the color to okay well this is a really nice painting june you know i like this quite a bit um it's kind it of loose. yeah it's kind of loose mm -hmm. you know and kind of fresh you know it's not overworked you know and it's got kind of a nice emotional feel to it you know when you look at her face you know there's an expression and a feeling there uh, anybody else see that or? I like it, it a lot. I like it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Like it. it's, yeah. it's free. It's light. It's free. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. I like your brushstrokes. I, I like it. Yeah. And the you know one of the things that you did really nicely was your background back here. You know it's neutral, mm -hmm. but it's not as dark as the hair. So you've really kind of yes. kept the value separate. You know really nicely in there um so yeah good job that i like that thank you yeah um and then we have a flower okay and um now this is colored pencil right yeah color pencil okay all right Those are pretty yeah <laughs> yeah you do you know what kind of flowers they are well like uh, a Kind of lily. Why the lily? Ah, really? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm just looking at kind of the shapes of the petals, and I. I haven't quite figured out what kind of flower they are. Anybody a botanist around here? Did you say what? I think it you said me, water lily. It reminds me of a. It reminds me of a violet, or even maybe. Yeah, a yeah, a little bit like a violet, kind of violet. Mm -hmm. Right. Or or a pansy? I don't yeah. know. What's the How, are these like little flowers or are they like big tall flowers? I don't know. I just uh, uh Did you draw these from like a photograph or did you draw them from the actual flower? No, no, the photograph. A photo. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you can't tell. So from the from the length of the stems, it seems like it's a large flower. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they could yeah. be pretty small. They could be, you know. Bigger than a pansy. Yeah. Um, yeah, not sure. You can call the white of pencil. White pencil. P P A N S Y. Pansy, yeah, we were right. <laughs> hey, why the pansy? Yeah. Okay. All right. Very yeah. So they're kind of small flowers. Yeah. All right, uh, and then you have, you know, this piece right here, and again, you know, I, I like how you approached it. You got like real loose color in the background, and then the outline, the drawing, actually kind of holds it together. Um. And that works pretty well, you know. Now, I'm guessing this is a guy. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, this is a guy. 
yeah, it doesn't look like a, a woman. And, you know, and he, he works, you know. He looks like a male figure, not a, not a female figure. Okay? Uh, let's see. You got she looking down at him? She's looking down at him? Well, kind of looking up at him, really. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. As you see, we're going to, I'm taking it that this is a hat, right? And we're yeah, yeah, this is a hat. Yeah. yeah, we're looking at a bottom, the bottom brim of a hat right here on his head. Yeah. And there's the top of the hat. So, all right. So, June, these are the ones I wanted to mm -hmm. get to. So, uh, what's going on here? Which one? The one that we're looking at. Of the lady. Oh, now we see it. Now we see it. This is the last uh, time you uh, you screen. I screenshot. I did a screenshot. You show us this uh, lady lie down. Oh, did I? Okay. Huh. All right. Well, yeah, she looks like she's lying down. You know. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a nice little composition. You know, with the pillows and and how everything comes in from the bottom, and then you get the figure. And the contrast between the colored background and the light on her, and then the dark hair, darker hair. Okay. So yeah, and you definitely you know go right to the face because again you've got more contrast in this area than you do any of the rest of the. Uh, uh, Somebody calling me from Villa Rica. I don't know why. Um, no, but again, you know, the contrast right in here, you know, draws your eye, you know, to the focal point, which is good. Now, what's going on with your hand? Is it going under something here? Supposed to behind. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah, yeah it, it kind of, you know, I probably would make the, an outline of this. Hmm. this a little bolder, okay. a little clearer, so that you get a clear idea that this is yeah. what this was, okay. and the hand goes behind it, okay? Because okay. right now it just sort of disappears. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I just, you know, simple little line, done. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And then, okay. Yeah, and then this must be another one of those things you took a screenshot of, right? Uh, this is from the a magazine. Oh, from a magazine. Okay. All right. Okay. So, again, you know, where we're at, you know, we're, we're kind of at her eye level. And our eye level is up here. So, we're closer up here than we are down here. And you see it kind of diminishes and goes away as it moves to the bottom. So... So you you know you've got some nice kind of foreshortening going on there. Um, your focal point, you know, is really up here, right where the head is, which is, I'm guessing, where you want everybody to look. Um, thing I would say is, excuse me, you know, down here, you know, the little pattern and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if that got softened or went away, it might work better because, you know, all the texture and stuff down here is a little distracting. Now it can be there, it just, yeah, it just can't be as strong. Uh, this strong, okay, I got it, yeah. yeah. So, 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 you, so you're saying the first thing, the first thing I look at should not be the, 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 the um, the, uh, the, the design, because that's really what attracted me to it. You say what I really should be looking for is the face. You say, what I looked at, yeah, what I looked at was not was uh, because it was uh, bright. Yeah, but it's also got a got a real strong kind of texture pattern down here, and it's here and mm -hmm. here. See, and this is less important and further away, right from mm -hmm. high level. So leaving it up here and softening it down here would help uh, the okay. bottom of the, the drawing, 
you know, back okay. away from us. You know, even though they're similar, right? Mm -hmm. We have to make yeah. them exactly the same. And since the focus okay. is really right up in here, you know, mm -hmm. I'd leave those alone, but I would take maybe like a white Prismacolor pencil or something and just go over these okay. very lightly, you know, just to soften them. You know, you don't have to take them away. Just uh, make okay. them not as strong as these. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. I, like, I like the slow way, the slow way she did the hair. And she just like, you know, I didn't, I don't take any time with it, but it, but it looks like hair, you know, to me. I, I'd like, Charles, yeah. Charles, if, uh, if the focus was not on her face, uh -huh. but she really wanted to show the design uh, on the jacket itself, then would it be okay yeah. for the, if, if she could take the focus away from the face, let's say the face was, was just blanked out almost, then she would have the design on the bottom part of the jacket because it's closer, stronger in color or value. Well, but yeah, the thing is, would it be closer to us? You know, the way it's drawn, you know, there's a lot of foreshortening in the figure. And that tells us that the top of the figure up here where the shoulders and the head are, are closer to us mm -hmm. than the hips. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, you know, yeah. now if she decided that that was the focal point, then yeah, I would let all of this go and be, you know, <laughs> a lot more sketchy and loose. And again, I would diminish these so that again, that would be the area that we would focus on. So that's what she was after. I said, I said that because if you were, if, if, she was, if she was trying to sell the jacket, if the jacket was something. Yeah that with the model was modeling, she was a model, then you want the people to see the jacket and not just, the model would be Absolutely. there, but not, not not be the focus. So what was I, she doing in that case? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I agree, because yeah, that's, that's how I'm looking at it. I have the focus on the jacket and the design, mm -hmm. and that's what draws my attention. And I think maybe the magazine was trying to do the exact same thing, because I think it, I think it looks great like that. Okay, so I want you to do something, okay? I want you to take your finger or your hand okay. and just cover up the design and the head. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so if you, if you block out the design and the head, mm -hmm. then that pattern down on the bottom mm -hmm. becomes the more dominant thing, right? Yeah. Okay, when you look at both of them, you know, all of it together, right? Doesn't your eye keep going down to the bottom and then back up and then to the head and then back down? And <laughs> but isn't that what you want? If that's what you would, if you're painting this beautiful jacket like this with this beautiful design on it, isn't that what you want someone to do? Not necessarily, no, because... I mean, if it's in a magazine, they're trying to sell that jacket. Right. <laughs> Well, the so I'm going to buy that jacket because of what's on the design, not the model. <laughs> right, but the photographer, okay. Yeah. And that magazine is trying to do something different than maybe what she was doing. And she, she, she did all this work, you know, on this woman's face and everything else. And so it's like, okay, having the design up here and all is fine. I'm not saying take this away but just don't make it as prominent as this. Because yeah. this is further away from us, remember? And she's, she's trying to get that foreshortened look to the figure. With this being as strong as this, it looks as close to us, you know, so it's equal and it flattens the drawing out. If, if this were just a little less prominent, our focus would be up here. We'd still see this, but you know, it wouldn't be as strong and it wouldn't look as flat. You know, this would come forward up here and then this would move back. Charles, I, I uh, can recall back in, uh, I guess about two decades now almost, that they stopped, uh, they took the heads off of, off of mannequins. No head on the mannequins, just up to the neck and no more. And I, I, I was saying, why did they do that? Now I can see, yeah, I want you to see the clothes. They don't want you to see that mannequin's face that's taken away from their clothes. 
Right. And you'll see more and more of that now. Yeah. So. Well, that's because, yeah, if, they, if they're trying to show off the clothes and you, yes. put, a, you put a human face up there. Yeah. Something about being human that people will yeah. gravitate towards the face. So. Yeah, we have, a, we have a tendency, it's a natural tendency of humans, when we see something that, again, begins to look human, we kind of mm -hmm. look the head, right? Mm -hmm. How many people do you, you come up to and have a conversation with and look at their shoes? And folks, it happens. Oh, it happens. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm talking to women here. We look at people's shoes. Oh, so oh, no. oh, 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 yeah. You know, you know what you I check mean. out a woman. You check out a woman three ways. You look at her pocketbook, <laughs> her hairstyle, and you look at her shoes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you look at the men's shoes yeah, also. Yes, you do. Well, Rebecca, yeah. you have a definite, a different set of priorities than I do. So. <laughs> no, I'm just talking about the fashion plate type people. I know. Right. Okay. Yeah. But at, but at, but at, but at the same time, I I think I, I think I'm starting to see what you're saying. That the top part of the lady is leaning forward. Then right. then that then the, the then the the, the, the the items on that place have to be sharper than, than the part where she is leaning backwards. That's right. all. Yeah, if you're gonna create mm -hmm. any depth in there, right, and get the plot, yeah. you know, her legs and everything to go away from you, you know, you soften those those that pattern down there on the bottom and it does that. Okay. If you mm -hmm. leave that pattern as sharp as it is at the top, then it flattens the drawing up. I do, I do want to say, I know we're out of time, but I did, did want to say one other thing to uh, Rebecca. And that is, I, I love that little house that she drew because what I, what I liked about it is the way she made her shadow, she used purple, a lavender or something. And then, and then in, the, in the greenery. You're talking about June, aren't you? Talking about June, yeah. Yeah, because we're Oh, yeah, June, June, yeah. Yeah, we yeah that's right, June. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the way she made the shadows in the, uh, the greenery. You mean the tree that was up in front? Rather than using browns or a combination of greens, she used pinks. I said, I really love how she did those colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I love how she used that, that interesting combination of colors, you know. Okay. Yeah, so she right. used the purples for the shadows and how she used the pinks rather than the browns or dark greens for the shadows in, in the, uh, in 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 the in the in the uh the greenery okay. well now see, now we have another piece of work up for auction yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you our there you go there you go in your bid there you yeah. go and then, now, right. i would like, i would like to just compliment june i think she's really come a long way in the last few months so oh, her yeah. stuff is really they really good yeah thank you <laughs> i agree i agree <laughs> All right, so now, last but not he least, really is going to be Rebecca. <laughs> now we're going to real. Talk about hey, it. that used to be what you said about me. <laughs> last but not least. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you didn't send anything in today, did you? I know. I will. I will though. Okay. All right. Um, but this is the thirty-minute drawing. Okay. And okay, so let's look at this a little bit. Okay. Um. Now, if we, look at where, if we look at where most of the contrast is in this drawing, you know, it's right up here, right? You know, the contrast between the dark of the hair and then the skin, right? And so for the most part, this is kind of the area we focus on and that's the area that begins to move forward. Um, and then this is, you know, sitting back behind her. You know, she's got the shoulder coming down with the rib cage, and it's sitting in front of the midsection, you know, of her torso, and then the hips, and then the legs back behind her. So there's this nice sort of progression and sequence of, you know, one shape over another. Um, now, Rebecca? I'm here. You get up in this area right here. You know, let me blow that up. The, uh, where the leg and where the hip and the buttocks hip sort of buttocks. separate. You know, you've got, you've got the line here and it comes down 
see and, and breaks, you know, the, the buttocks or the hip in front of the leg, right? But okay. you did kind of the same thing Bernice did. You kind of okay. just made a straight line there. Right. And <clears throat> even though maybe you see a straight line, you know, in the reference, you might want to think to yourself, okay, I'm trying to describe a round leg. And can I describe a round leg with a flat, straight line? Mm, the answer is no, no, it needed to be curved. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, if you push that, you make it a little more curved, and you can stop it here. And then again, pick that up here. And see, here on the bottom side, you know, you've got this nice curve, right? All the way up, right, right to the rib cage. See? And it's this nice, long, flowing line. The only thing I would have done different there is you see you've got a nice strong dark here. Now maybe not as dark, but I would I'd make that line a little stronger. And that would tell you there's more weight. You know. Where okay. the body is laying on top of that. And then okay. uh, when it comes to like the outline of the bottom, I probably wouldn't have gotten any darker that right over on this side say i would have softened okay. it a little bit so it's okay cut back. because you see this line gets so dark that it's as dark as the hair right and the shoulder and what it right. does is it wants to come through you know even though you so, pushed it back you know by breaking this line in front of it because of the value yeah. of it you know it it wants to move forward so again i would just Make it a little bit softer, right? Okay. Make that a little softer and, and this a little stronger, and you know, you would have gotten, you know, the whole thing to kind of push, you know, forward and back with the way you see. Okay. okay. Um, okay. So here we have the standing figure, right? We're and leaning. Yeah. And so look. You know, you, you've come in, you found where the light is hitting, where the shadow, where the edge of the shadow is. And see, you made a real clear, distinctive break between what's in shadow and what's in light. And so if you squint your eye down, you know, you can see where the shadows are sitting. Um, and I've talked about this before. You've got some tone over most of this. And the only thing I would have done is I would have just kind of gone over all of that shadow area and kind of flattened it out a little bit and, and got it a okay. little bit darker so that you had a little more contrast between light and okay. shadow. But where you okay. have it um, is fine. You know, just you know, push the value a little bit. Okay. Uh, and I think you could um, Now, Bernice, we were talking about that long line, you know, down this side of the figure. So from the elbow, see, she's got a pretty strong line moving all the way down. And see, it gets a little thicker, a little heavier in here. And then again, it's it's still a very strong line all the way down to the ankle of the foot, right? And when you look at that in comparison to the line that she's got on the other side, okay, you know, this one moves forward, this one moves back. Okay? Now, the only thing I would say that I would maybe do a little bit differently. You can have the line there, but I wouldn't have made it quite so strong, quite so dark, you know, in value. And okay. So that it would be a little bit softer. Now what you could do, this is graphite, right? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, if I, if I got a line that's too strong and I want to soften it back, I could either use what we call a stump Right, that little roll right. of paper, and just right. over it a couple of times to just blur it and soften it a little bit. The other thing you okay. can do is just take your finger and just you know just go right down it you know one or two times, and again just okay. kind of soften it back just a little tiny bit. Um, okay. And if you did that, this would begin to move backward more, and that would begin to move forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now. So this is the lady who's laying down in the chair, okay? Now. He's setting her up. <laughs> well, you know, she was not 
she was not a thin girl, okay? She wasn't. Now, what she did, though, and the reason that she looks, you know, like she fattened her up a little bit, was that the proportion between the legs and the body, these legs needed to be about two to three times larger. And if they were bigger, these would have come forward and it would have pushed all this back. Because okay. there was a lot of foreshortening in there. Right. And, and the feet down here were as big as her head. Okay. okay. And, and what you've done is you've, you focused up here first, I think, and then you started moving toward the leg and discovered yes. that you were running out of page fast. <laughs> And so you oh, you shortened them a little that? bit to squeeze them on there. And right. You probably would have been better off if you just would have made them bigger and let them go right off the edge there. Right off the page, okay. Yeah. Or just not not or just done the top half of her body or something. Yeah. yeah. And just let the bottom half fade away or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where you know, I mean, clearly it looks like you focused more up here around her head and shoulders and stuff than you did down. yeah that that's where i started yeah yeah now one thing i want to point out to you it's like in some of your earlier drawings like here and in this drawing both um you know generally you know as you lay down some values and tones on the body you know you rub them back and you soften them right now i just noticed on this one you know the background got a little bit scratchy in here um, mm -hmm. You know, be careful with that. You know, this is this is not what we want to look at, and so don't leave it as textural. Rub it back, soften it, do something with it so that it oh, okay. distract from you know what we want to look at, which is the figure. Okay. Same okay. same thing here. You know, I know what you're trying to do. You're you're trying to darken the background so yeah. that the chair and everything pops forward, but you know just. Mm -hmm doing a little area like that and leaving it rough like that makes a texture and it makes that want to come forward and see right. what we want all of this to kind of fade back and sit back behind her so so okay. the less texture you have back here the better it can be a dark okay. value but you don't want to see a lot of the scratchy lines okay okay all right. and then Thank let's you. talk about your animals <laughs> So uh, there's your kiwi, okay? Now you put in the foreground, and I think you and I talked about this. Um, yes, thank you. Yeah, but the, the thing is, all right, so you've got this, it's, it's kind of a middle dark value, and it's got a texture, it looks like the ground, and then you come forward, and then this is supposed to be a shadow, right? But the shadow- I think I was trying to, yeah, I was trying to indicate a shadow there. Yeah, but the thing is, the shadow can't be on the front side and on the back side at the same time. <laughs> You're right. You know, I mean, if the shadow were just on the front and then this kind of transition down into there, it would be fine. Or if it were just right. here on the back and then this transition down, that would be fine. But to have it equal, what you've done is you've made this dark line right across the composition of the page. And it, it, it kind of acts like a fence. You know, you go back to it and it's stuck, right? And you can't really get past it. Uh, and so what I had said to you is that some of the dark back in here, you really need to get that texture and stuff down here in the foreground as well. And if, if you can get rid of some of this, I would. I'd soften it up some way. Yeah. So soften up the dark shadow. Yeah. This, Is that what I hear you saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And make this a softer transition where it doesn't just all abruptly start and then there's a whole new color and texture and everything else, you know, starting, you know, like right at the bottom of that line. Okay. Okay. So if That's there's no line, then this dark can just keep on coming down in, into here in areas, right? And you get right. rid of that horizontal line. All right, so then we have your L for lion, okay? And uh, 
He looks like he's singing. <laughs> he's roaring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, he kinda he kinda looks like he's singing. You know, maybe he's doing yeah. the blues. You know. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> so you know, he looks like a, a blues singer singing to me. There you go. Yeah. But you know, I like the design of it. You know, I like the shapes of the hair and the expression on the face. And you know the fact that you know these kind of have a little bit of movement to them, so yeah, it sits on the page nicely and all, and works really nicely. Um, I, I, I have a personal question for Rebecca. Rebecca, when you get this the way you, way you want, are you going to sell these books? Um, I I don't know. I uh, I might. Are you because interested? Because I love them. I, so far, I love it. So far, with what you've done. Okay, I don't have a uh, agent or anything like that, but I think this is the, this is the um, this is the push I'm going to give myself because I've done about four or five others, but nothing okay. quite as long as this one. So I think this is going to push me over the edge to really pursue getting it published. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I may be interested too, Rebecca. This is Gwen. Okay. I just I have a ten-month-old uh, grandbaby. Yes. Oh, how fun. Yes, people have grandchildren. Yes. And useful, we can say, useful, yeah, useful, done useful by somebody we know. Somebody we know did this book, you know. There you go. That's right. Thank you for your votes of confidence. I really appreciate it. <laughs> right. All right. Well, you deserve it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is this is the artwork you sent in from the itinerant artists who did one of your relatives, right? That's correct. This little girl didn't live beyond about uh, four or five years old. I think she oh. was maybe two or three when this portrait was done, and it was done by an itinerant artist who had the complete outline done, and all he did was add her face. And it, it was wow. a man that did that. He went from town to town with the background already painted in, and if you had a person in your family that you wanted a portrait of, and he could figure out how to put it in there. He would. Right. Yep. And where? What? Uh, where was this done? This was done in. Um, it was either southern Georgia or northern Florida. But my grandmother in Tallahassee is the one that had it and gave it to me. Oh, cool! So cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, Thank and you. this, you know, this kind of stuff was pretty common. You know, particularly really all the way like from like the late 1700s all the way up through really about like 1930 1940 uh because there were a lot of artists who would kind of travel through these little towns and they would do things like this um and they would have you know a bunch of these canvases pre-painted and, and stuff and you know you just show up and then you'd put a little face in there um you know in your scene and uh you know, done, done deal. Um, you know, so, so my grandmother had a lot of different um, items in her house, but as a child, I asked her, "May I have that one?" And she, she did. She gave it to me when I was when she, when it was time. Oh, yeah. okay, nice. Yeah. Well, you can you can see that this is on a stretch canvas, and you can see the stretcher bars right here, where over time, you know, the canvas is loosened. And and so you got a little bit of a seam in there. Um, yeah, I wondered about that. Did it was it was it framed in a smaller frame at one time? No, uh, no. But over time, uh, being in South Georgia, you know, you get a lot of humidity. And you go from hot to cold, hot to cold, and so the canvas would stretch and relax over time. And and nobody went in. And there's like little pens that you know you can take that would go up into the stretcher bar and stretch the canvas and retighten it and nobody ever did that so it just went slack now if you wanted to if you wanted to tighten the back of this you know and get it to lay flat all you basically have to do is uh if you can get to the back of it if it's not covered in paper then take a sponge and some water on the back side and just dampen the back side of it and then let it dry and the canvas will tighten again and flatten out. Ooh, Charles, I, I'm not gonna touch it. It's too old. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to get 
probably I'd probably ruin it. I it's fine. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Well, the the fact is you won't. You won't ruin no. it. No. No. Well <laughs> you're you're not drowning it. You're just <laughs> you know, you're just getting the, the back of the canvas a little bit moist and wet so that it can re tighten and re stretch is all. Right. Okay. Huh. Rebecca it does work. It's amazing. And you have won't you tried it me. before? Quinn, have you done that? I, I, Charles and I have, have seen it. He's helped me uh, tighten up some canvases that were really loose. Oh, so okay. it does work. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Thank you for that input. Okay. And then last but not least, this is, uh, I take it that this is your color mixture. Yes. I went back through that chart. Huh? That, that, that chart that we download illegally <laughs> oops, from the internet. And, and I made it my own. And so I think that that's legal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you did it. Um, okay. And so you were working with, now that doesn't look like black. That's black. No. like a raw umber. It was uh, it's colored pencil. Ah, okay. If I wanted it to look like black, I would have to put many more layers. Okay. But now okay. what? It looks a little bit brownish, kind of like raw umber or something like that. Yes, I think that's the way it turns out when you add um, the red and the yellow to it. Or yeah, the, but no, I'm I'm saying just just the the dark by itself, right? Oh, oh, okay. Well, it was just um, it's the same brand of pencil that is the colored pencil that you use. Okay, but what color is it? Oh, black. Oh, it is black. Yeah, okay. it's black. Yeah, it looks a little bit brown here. Okay. Right. All right. Well, you know, when you add red to it or yellow, it's going to turn brown. Okay. Correct. But yeah, this this kind of looks like a raw umber, which is kind of a cooler, darker brown. Um, you know, plus red, plus yellow, plus white. Um, and the thing is, if if this had been either black which is what you're saying it is, and or raw umber, it would be very close to what we call a, you know, a Zorn palette, uh, or a, a palette that uh, Velasquez, the Spanish artist, would have used. Oh, and that's I, interesting. Yeah. Because Say I, that again, Charles. Who was it? A Velasquez. Velasquez. Yeah. You know, he was a Spanish he only used, artist. He only used like four colors, black and white and yellow and I don't know. Well, it was yellow, white, red, and black. There you go. Yeah, because yeah, in Spain, he didn't have the availability of getting blue. You know, it, he couldn't get it. So, you know, he used a black, and if you put a little bit of white with the black that he used, which was, you know, pretty close to like a Mars black or something like that, um, it had a bluish tint to it, and that's how he would create his, his blue color mixtures, you know, by adding the white to black. Okay. Um, and uh, again, so and his name was Z, Z Velasquez. V so, L oh, yeah, yes, um, I'm familiar with him. Yeah, I thought yeah. you had yeah. said Zorn, Z O. Or or, in or something yeah, like that. Yeah, uh, later on, on, Andre Zorn, you know, kind of used his palette, and uh, so did Sororio for a, quite a while. Uh, Sargent, you know, experimented with uh, Velasquez's palette as well. Um, you know, a lot of painters did. So, but you know, yes, working with a really limited, you know, number of colors, you know, he he got got a lot of use out of it. So it's a good effect. So, so I have yes. a package of I have a package of markers that say flesh tone on them, but when I found that I've used them and applied them in drawings, mm -hmm. that they're very dark. So yeah. I was real interested to see what would happen if I just use colored pencil. Right. And you'll you'll get a better range of value out of the colored pencil than you will the marker. I think you're right. Watercolor pencil as well. Yeah, either one. Yeah, you'll you'll have more control over your values than you will with markers. 
um, because markers can get, you know, really dark really quick, depending on the paper that you're yeah. using. Now they have, you know, specialty papers that are made specifically for marker. Um, you know, and that works pretty well, you know, because by the time the marker dries, it'll be a little bit lighter on it. Um, but, you know, how much drawing do you do with markers? You know, if that's if that's one of your main tools, then you know, get marker paper. If not, use color pencils and watercolor, stuff like that. Okay. All right. So I think that's everything. Um, let's see. Oh, Wanda. Okay. Sorry, I have to. Yeah, my class. So she left. All right. Uh, so anybody got any questions? Anything um, we need to talk about before we go away? Do we have any assignments for tomorrow? For tomorrow? Nope. Tomorrow's no. a... Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's yeah, painting mixed media. Now, if you have, if you've been working on, you know, trying to get your, your spheres painted, you know, Oh, okay. That's a good reminder. I'll go back to that. I need to redo mine. Right. You know, value, and then after value, you have uh, intensity, and then after that, you have value, intensity, and temperature. Right. That was kind yes. of the exercise. So yeah, if you if you got some of those done, you know, we can talk about those tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. So I guess I'll see you guys. 10 a.m. in the morning, right? Have a good evening. Thank you. Yes, you, you too. too. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.